I mean, like, I suppose really just like, you know, listening to it, just the, the radio, really, I guess like a lot of people. I think the first song I actually remember, the first like, pop song or whatever, that I remember hearing on the radio with any sort of, uh, with any kind of clarity at all would be probably being the Beatles, She Loves You. Um, I have a sort of, a distinct memory of that. Of, well, I, grew, I, was, I was born in Eastbourne in Sussex. And I have this memory of like hearing that it must have been coming. I was um, I was out in the garden, so it must have been like from a radio that was in the kitchen or something like that. And uh, or maybe my sister had a transistor and was out in the garden with it. There's something like you know. But um, yeah, and then just I, I suppose again, like like everyone, you know, you just you, you just hear stuff, don't you? You know, um, it sort of gets under your skin, into your ears, into your brain. And when and when you um, you know when you left school, did you um, did you already have kind of dreams of becoming a professional musician or anything like that? Or not not as such, really. I think there was always a. It was more really when punk happened that the sort of notion that this was something that was a, that, that was actually that was something that was doable, that was that was an actual uh, you know a realistic aspiration. Um, it, it brought that sort of into focus. Is that that sort of thing? Well, yeah, sure, you know. I mean, like, this is this is meant to be participated in. Anybody should be. Anybody can do this if they want to. If they want to have a go at it, you know. So I guess that's that's how it how it went. Yeah. And and that whole sort of that T-shirt, you know, the the his three chords now form a band. Yeah. You know, I think it was in the Sniffing Glue actually originally did that, and then it was. Uh, they did a, a t-shirt with the sort of like um whatever the three chords were <laughs> i forget now <laughs> um but yeah yeah just um just the sort of a, a desire to be a part of it to be a part of all that because it was something that was so exciting it was um could really relate to it and when was the first time that you ever sang and stuff like had, had you done much music no i i had um i had done well actually um this, i went to a grammar school and um they had a they had a cadet corps um which had a band so i played um initially the fife which i kind of got a, something of a handle on but it had no sort of real bearing on the whistle later on it was just that's more of a coincidence than anything else um but it was i found it a little bit i don't know maybe a bit unsatisfying perhaps i was only I was only in the cadets for like, um, well, I suppose when I was in the first year, so when I was 11. But um, I switched to the cymbals, which actually I really enjoyed, I have to say. And, uh, and marching, and, you know. And so, like, how, how did you get to, together with the guys um, to, form, to form the Pogues? Like, wh where, where did you all meet and stuff? Well, um, the Pogues sort of coalesced really in, in, uh, in uh, we were all living, or most of us were living in, in, uh, in squats in a street called Burton Street, which is in Bloomsbury in central London. Um, but then, um, I mean, prior to that, I, you know, the, I had a band called the Millwall Chainsaws, which started sort of in, in my bedroom up in Temple Fortune, many miles from Millwall, really, uh, um, in like in sort of early 77, um, who we did. We were together about two years. We did something like, I think we did seven gigs in just over two years. It was really much more of an idea than an actual band. You know, it was like, okay, we're in a band. We st we've got a name. We've said that we're in a band. So we are in fact in a band, you know, we are a band. Um, but the, the, the chainsaws were a sort of like, um, that there was, uh, we did a show um, prior to the Pogues. There was um, myself and Shane and, and, um, Ollie Watts, who was the drummer in the Millwall Chainsaws, uh, John Golding, who was actually not a chainsaw, but was in another band called The Russians, and um, he was playing guitar, and um, and a guy called Matt Jacobson, who was the bass player in the Millwall Chainsaws, and Shane um, got together to do this. Uh, we played at Cabaret Futura in uh, in Soho, um, calling ourselves the New Republicans and doing basically um, revved up versions of Irish rebel songs. And Jem Finer was at that gig, and um, saw that there was really something that could be that that could that could be done with this. So about eighteen months later, the Pogues um, emerged. And, out of that. and, and the, <coughs> excuse original, me. The, the original um, like name for the Pogues um, was one that you were you were you a part of coming up with it? And I came up with that. Yeah, Pogue were, were, you, 
Pope Mahone, which um, it means kiss my ass in Gaelic. Yeah. Uh, so was that kind of like affected by uh, by punk? You know, in in a way, like. Yeah, well, it, it was, and it sort of seemed to it, it kind of seemed to nicely sum up what we were doing. You know, I mean, like there there was. Um, I, I, yeah. So yes, this is the answer to your question. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the name the Pogues, and obviously you couldn't rename it, but I almost prefer the original name. I've got to say. Well, yeah. I mean, it was only um, what happened was our first single, "Dark Streets of London," was getting a bit of airplay, and we were going on, uh, you know, radio. We were being played on radio on this "Dark Streets of London" by Pogue Mahone, and then some bright spark. At, um, I think it was at the Gaelic department. I should say Gaelic department at um, BBC Scotland or Radio Scotland, whatever it's called, um, told Radio, said to Radio, what well, do you know what this means? And it's like, I don't know, the, the BBC kind of typically didn't want to offend all the legions of, of Gaelic speakers in the UK. And um, so they stopped playing us. So um, we, we all, people were already calling us the Pogues anyway as a kind of shorthand, as the abbreviation, you know. So we, uh, yeah, we just changed our name. I mean, yeah. uh, the Irish, funnily enough, I mean, like, well, you know, Ireland is a country where the, the, the expression Pope Mahone is in sort of like in, in, in quite common usage and was uh, they, they never had any problem with it at all. The only people who might conceivably be offended by that kind of language, which is really pretty mild. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, I mean, you know, these days, despite all the kind of people citing like cancel culture and stuff like that, I, I'd have thought you'd have got away with it these days. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just a different time. Um, but so, so do you, do you have good memories of making Red Roses for me? Your, your first. Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. Um, that was. It was all sort of really, you know. It was quite a sort of a, a, just a blast being in the studio and, and 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 making a record. I remember when we, you know, getting my hands on a on a finished copy for the first time. Actually, when we were on tour. Uh, the first tour that we ever did supporting Elvis Costello, we were in um, Oxford the day that Red Roses came out. And um, we all piled into a record shop in somewhere in Oxford and uh, there it was, you know, and it was like, yeah, that's a, that was a real buzz. And, and so, because you were supporting um, Elvis Costello and, and did, he ended up producing Rum Sodomy and The Lash. Yeah. Um, the next uh, the next record. Um, so were you guys? So presumably you guys got um, you know, close touring and stuff, and and wanted him to work. Or is that is, is that right? That's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, was did you think he had a, a, a good effect as, as producer on that record? Um, uh, yeah, I, I I guess he did. I mean, I, I'm. I, I couldn't say that somebody else wouldn't have done a better job, but I mean, like, then somebody else might have done a worse job, you know, I mean, like, I'm, I'm always a bit, I don't know, ambivalent. I was a bit, I should say, in those days, ambivalent about, about the whole notion of, of producers. And um, I mean, I was kind of like, I, I didn't even really like the idea of, 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 you know, doing like multiple takes or anything like that. I quite liked the notion of just going into a studio and actually banging everything out live, but that's not really, uh, that's not the way it's done, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and ma many people think the third record, if I should fall from grace with God, is, is uh, your best record. I mean, I suppose, you know, those those records around then in the 80s. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, I think actually, I, I think there's a lot of people like the second album, like Ron sort of in the lash a lot. And yeah, um, I think there's a lot to be said for the first one. But I think any of those, first, those first three albums i think represent the the best of the band and and um why do you think that is that the, the, the first three records you know resonated so much and and you know even you know you're saying that you you love them as well kind of um more than the rest um i think that there's i, I think um generally speaking most bands should probably split up after their third record if not their second I think what happens a lot of the time is, you know, you have your your first the first two albums tend to be songs that you that you already know that you've already been playing. Um, maybe you know on the second album there might be a couple that are sort of in the process of being written when you come around to record it. But generally speaking, it's 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 all stuff that you know. So they've had a chance to really get bedded in, and um, you just kind of know them better. They come from a, a time and a place when you're you're not so much. I find your perspective changes as 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 time moves on in the 
and this isn't like this isn't true of everybody, but it seems to be generally the case. Um, your perspective changes, and not for the better. Um, you become, I think, as time progresses, too uh, too mm -hmm. insular in the sense that you're like you're you're sitting in this rather unusual and um, somewhat kind of almost isolated um, position of you're like now in a band in a, and you're sort of like this is what you do you you write and you record whereas before all that's the sort of like it, it's almost incidental it's 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 uh, ev you know that the music is something that is that is happening rather than something that you're now going to have to go out and um, construct again if, if, if that makes sense yeah I think this is why um, you know when a lot of, when when the uh, when the post reformed started doing the the reunion shows and people saying oh you know are you gonna are you gonna make another album you know do, do another record and I always felt that it would have been utterly pointless because you know, there's no way that we could have sort of been in the same kind of headspace that we were certainly from like Shane's point of view when he was after all the main songwriter but to be in the same headspace as he was in the early 1980s then you know trying to sort of like recreate that. 20 years later on with a, all, all that time um, with, with that whole sort of gap you know I mean like I, I just think it, it, it can't really happen I don't think you can sort of retrace your steps and sort of and, and, and put yourself back in that position I think there are there are some people and I would say you know notably say like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds who have been consistently turning out really high quality music which has a kind of a, a kind of continuity to it, and they've been doing that. You know, he's been doing that through the birthday party and with the bad seeds, and it's just been, I think, a pretty steady flow of of, of really great stuff. Um, yeah. I think you could probably say the same of maybe people like I don't know Tom Waits, PJ Harvey is, uh, is is I think another notable example. But generally speaking, I think that isn't the case. I think people tend to, you know, you might get the odd sort of like great records suddenly appearing in someone's in someone's um, um, so when, someone's history, you know, someone's timeline. Um, yeah. But generally, that's more by accident than. Well, I can't say it's more by accident than design because plainly it is by design. So, message is plain. Um, but um, usually, that's that, that isn't the case, and and you can sort of see that people are, I don't know, they're running out of ideas or they're they're, they're treading water. Uh, yeah. I think in the case of the Pope's, that and you know, there's other factors as well, of course. You know, I mean, like. Does that we we simply that? work too hard and it was just put too much of a strain on things, you know. Well, just pouring and making records too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. But actually, I think, yeah, again, from Shane's point of view, from uh, being the main songwriter, having to do it, I think robbed him of a lot of the joy in, in, uh, in doing it, yeah. which led to the obvious problems further down the line. You know, that we would have been much better off, I think, and a lot of people would be better off, certainly taking a break for a bit and just taking stock and and then maybe having another go at it yeah or not <laughs> it's different it's diff yeah it's difficult obviously when you're in it and it, and then it becomes more like yeah. work, but you kind of don't wanna, don't wanna give it up because you've you, you know you're worried about losing your momentum and stuff so it can be yeah 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 and you've also those people you know kind of depending on you and blah 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 yeah yeah um but but that said you know right up until the the poke mahone record you know, like one of your best love songs is Love You Till The End, which yeah. comes from that record. So, I mean, are you, are you fond of that that song? Is, is that I'm fine. I like that particular song. Yeah, I, I'm i not a great fan of, actually, I've got to say, of the, of the two uh, post-Shane albums. I just don't think they stand up next to the, uh, to, to the previous five. But that's just me. Well, actually, it's not just me. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but I do like Love You Till The End, yes. There's yeah. a couple of songs on those records I think are really good. I think um, Andrew wrote a couple that are great. So, you know. So, I mean, it really, it, yeah, it really is um, su such a great record. So, I mean, it is proof that, that even when the records aren't like your, your most classic, like you still have moments of, of greatness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and, that's uh, very nice of you to say so. Well, I mean, it's definitely it's a it's a fact, you know. Like that, that song is 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 loved by all the Pogues fans and even by casual listeners. So, um, well, it's funny actually. Love you till the end. And uh, when LimeWire was still a thing, you know, the kind of illegal downloading of thing, um, and you could see on that, you you could um, love you till the end was the second most downloaded Pogue song after Fairy Tale of New York. 
uh, was downloaded more than things like, say, Dirty Old Town or, or Pair of Brown Eyes or, or whatever. And I know a lot of that is just simply because of the uh, because of P.S. I Love You and um, people who really like P.S. I Love You and, and who really like Love You Till the End because of the, its use in that film. So yeah. people who know absolutely nothing about the punks, um, they're the ones who sort of like who drive that. Similar thing with Fairy Tale. You know, there's a Fairy Tale is a hugely popular song, but and it's a song that people who again really might know very little, if anything at all, about the Pogues. But the, of course, they know that song because, well, it is what it is. You know, it has a, yeah. it has an entire life of its own, separate to the Pogues. And I think that's probably true of, of "Love You Till the End" as well. Yeah, definitely to a certain extent. Although, you know, "Dirty Old Towns" probably these days like caught up. Um, I think you're yes. I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, like. Rum, Rum Sodomy and the Lash, you know, has, has kind of um, regained that, you know, because Lime, LimeWire, I guess, with people downloading um, individual songs. I mean, I guess it's true of Spotify as well. People kind of forget about albums. But it does seem like like your your, your records have kind of picked up. Uh, but yeah. I think um, at the same time, yeah. What, how, what's it like with that, with, with, with the Christmas song, you know, um, in terms of... Let me just get my water. Hold on a second. Sorry, I should have had that prepared. Uh, sorry, the Christmas song, fairy tale. Yes, yeah, so is 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 it? Um, you know, it seems like you're you're pretty accepting of the fact that it's a kind of you know, it is a monster hit, and it's uh, and it's kind of easy for something like that, which is played so much. It's played like something that was released new every year and shot to the yeah. top of the charts every single year. So I mean, it must be brilliant for business. But uh, it's it's great for Shane and Jen as the songwriters. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's something, you know, you're watching EastEnders and you know Christmas is coming when they suddenly, when they start playing um, fairy tale in the, in, 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 the, in the Queen Vic, you know, um, <laughs> or indeed the Rovers Return if you're, if, if, if you're watching Coronation Street. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a fairy tale is a kind of one of those, it's a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I mean, without wishing to be too flip about it, I, I suppose it actually genuinely is. Yeah, it is. It is. I, yeah. I, it's, it's a weird phenomenon, Christmas songs, because you can kind of, it's like being in, a, in an exclusive club almost, like your song will, will couldn't be part of that sort of like 20 or 30 pop songs that get, that get played by everyone every year and, and very yeah. probably would be in the like top five or something of like oh yeah definitely like, yeah. Of, like songs played especially in the UK but also in the US and all over the world we sort of uh, I mean certainly over here I mean like we, we you know we rival um, I think we've actually almost overtaken um, Slade and, and Wizard oh yeah yeah for sure um, and interestingly um, Steve Lillywhite was the I think was the tape op on no, can that be right? There's a Steve Lillywhite and um, 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 Christ, what's the wizard song called? I wish it could be Christmas every day. There's a Steve Lillywhite and um, I wish it could be Christmas every day connection. I know I can't actually remember what it is, and I'm thinking surely he's actually too young to have been involved in that, but maybe not. It's just about it's he could have been the tape up, yeah, yeah, young tape up. Yeah, because uh, I, I've had a conversation about uh, about it with him once, and he was talking about the uh, about the kids' choir um, at the end, which is the kids from Rowood's kids' school. So yeah, That's or maybe he was just maybe he was just maybe actually what he was he was just bemoaning the fact that that was their secret weapon, and we didn't we should have had a kids' choir as well. <laughs> because when the kids come in on that song, it's just absolute fucking magic, you know. Yeah, it is a good bit. It is a very good bit. Yeah, and but yeah, I mean they're they're they're, they're classic. Um, they're all cl classic records and classic yeah. records. But uh, so so from from the Pogues um, recorded material, I mean, are there some deep cuts that you particularly highlight? Some some kind of lesser known songs um, for for my listeners to check out, um, especially if they're you know the Philistines who only know uh, fairy tale. <laughs> Uh, um, absolutely unacceptable but <laughs> <laughs> I would I would always say to people uh, check out the Broad Majestic Shannon it's hardly a deep cut but it's I, I think it's Shane's finest song um, I think um, Body of an American um, I think 
the, the green and whale fisheries, our version of green and whale fisheries, um, buy the records, I would say to them, and find yeah. out for yourselves. But yeah, 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 definitely. Um, Greenland, Broad Majestic Shannon, Body of an American. I, I could go on. And I mean, the, the, and, and obviously from earlier in this conversation, the first three records, as you're saying, but you know, get the records and, and play them. Play I th them. Yeah, I mean, the, I think there's really good stuff on, on Peace and Love and Hell's Ditch. Um, I would say that the first, the, the first three are unquestionably the strongest. Well, um, we were doing, um, uh, Tim, you know, Tim Burgess does the uh, Tim's Twitter listening parties thing. Yeah. Um, we, we, we did the first three records. We started with Ron Solomon and The Lash. And then uh, we did Red Roses and then Fall from Grace. And it was really, because I, I don't really sort of, as a, I don't sort of sit down and listen to, to our stuff at home. You know, I just, you know, I just don't. But so sitting down and listening, say, to like Ron Solomon and the Lash, as I say, was the first one. And it was, you know, listen to it really, really loud in sort of tandem with a bunch of other people um, all doing the same thing at home. And it's just, it's such a good record. I mean, I was really quite sort of like, I was kind of delighted with how with how good it how good it sounded, and then the same with Red Roses and Fall from Grace as well. You know, the really sort of um, strong and alive, and um, you can sort of feel this is a this is a band sort of really. You can sort of like you can see that you can sort of feel everything sort of taking shape, even though we kind of like did them in the in the wrong order. It's all kind of you know you can yeah. plot that still. Yeah, it must be. It must have been a nice thing because, yeah, it must be rare to just listen to, to stuff that you've already done. But it must must have been a very satisfying exercise to just. It really was, yeah. And it's it's um, it is it's just really nice the way that other you know everybody was reacting to them. You know, I mean, like they're you know they're good records. Uh, absolutely. And and so what's it what's it been um, what's it been like you know uh, continuing to play live and. Um, I mean, you've you've already said why why you guys didn't um, go and make another record, and that is that is something that's very respectable. But, but do you still did did you enjoy kind of picking it back up and and oh yeah yeah very much so yeah um, it was again you know it was it was really it, the whole response was really gratifying the way that um, when we the, the first the first reunion tour that we did was actually back in 2001. And, um, you know, the, just to see, sort of see venues selling out so quickly and realizing, oh, no, we could have done a week there and all this kind of stuff. When we went back to America for the first time in 2005, um, we were a bit sort of, I think, uh, possibly a bit tentative or had been a bit tentative in, in approaching America about, about going back there. And we did like, I think it was four nights in New York, just bang, 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 with, um, you know, they, they sold out in no time at all. And it, it's, it's just like, just the, um, just, just the response we got. And it was great to be up there doing it again and everything, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it must, must have been a, a really nice way of continuing without, like, going back into this video well there was like you know there, there was there was no pressure at all really other than just having to sort of get up on stage and, and sort of play the set you know there was no we were kind of doing it for ourselves we weren't doing it to sort of promote a record or anything like that it was just like go out do the show earn some money you know it's nice um and and but just play the songs and sort of like bring them sort of bring them back to everybody yeah for the people who are hungry to hear them and so yeah, and it was also great, sort of like playing, you know, seeing that we it wasn't just like playing to a sort of a bunch of old bald guys. You know, we were getting really, really good crowds with a sort of like really wide range of, of, of ages and very sort of diverse. You know, it was good. And so this series is called Greatest Music of All Time, and and uh, you know, people have have different answers to this. Some people say it's impossible, but then name. Name names anyway. Uh, are there are there any artists who, for you, I mean, they, you know, it doesn't need to be Mozart or anyone, but um, for you, who represent the greatest music of all time? Um, um uh, yeah, I would say. I mean, like, there's people like Herbie Hancock, um, Jimi Hendrix, um, um, you know, music is, you know, it's, it, it, there's, there's, there's stuff. That I'm, have you heard of Lancome, the Irish band Lancome? 
I have heard of them. I haven't listened to them. L-A-N-K-U-M. They're a, they're a sort of... I saw them described as doom folk the other day, which is, which is quite, a, quite, a good, quite a good genre. Um, they're almost like an experimental folk group from, from Dublin who, like, they're extraordinary. They're really, really extraordinary. Um, so I would always I, uh, mention them. There's a, uh, we, um, we moved to, um, to New Orleans back in 2010. We bought a place in New Orleans and sort of lived there for a while. And um, I got to sort of, I was listening to a lot of Cajun music and um, I was being pl- I've been playing actually with a Cajun band called the Lost by Ramblers, who are from um, Lafayette and the region around Lafayette in, in southwest Louisiana. And um, they're, they're extraordinary. They're, um, I was sort of like, I was, I, I first saw them a couple of, uh, uh, playing at a couple of like parties in New Orleans and they just like, not my socks off. I'd also kind of I'd noticed their name because they were compared to us, uh, which is possibly slightly lazy journalism. But it's like they're a, a Cajun band who aren't like entirely sort of traditional. They bring in all these other sort of elements as well, but they have a very strong um, traditional sort of root. They have very strong traditional Cajun roots, however, you know. So, um, but. God, I mean, like the list of people who I think are really, you know, I could go on for a long, long time. Um, That's some interesting choices there. And some, yeah, obviously, black people at Herbie Hancock are incredible. Uh, but yeah, New Orleans as well, such a, such a great music um, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we were, we were, we were um, our house is in the Treme, which is, a, is the um, oldest black neighborhood in, um, in America in the whole country. Um, and it's also the sort of, it's the heart of the, um, the whole New Orleans um, brass band tradition. Um, I mean, plus though, I mean, just down the block from us, the, well, all around us actually, there's like all these people, all these like New Orleans surnames, that are, you know, Bartholomew's and, and, and um, Jesse Hill's relatives and like all these other sort of New Orleans dynasties, just like dotted around where we live. And it's, uh, it, it's extraordinary. Yeah, it must be. Um, yeah, it must be an amazing place place to live. Yeah, cool. yeah, it really, really is. 